Good morning, church. Welcome to another Sunday morning here with online services. Hopefully before long, we will be back into the church building and we'll have to do this. Um, before I go into our prayer list this morning, there's a verse I would like to give you all. It's out of John 14, 27, and it says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. I know there's a lot of fear going on right now in the world with this virus going on, but we need to remember to leave it at God's feet. So today on our prayer list, we have we have a couple of additions. We've got Scott Jacobs. He's uh, from Gresham, Oregon. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, they're kin to Jerry a little, and he was just diagnosed with lung cancer. We've got a friend of ours from Georgia. He's a pastor. His name is Robert Burt, who has the COVID-19 virus, and he's been in pretty bad shape. But this week they said that he did have a little bit of an improvement the other day. Um, just remember him. Uh, we've got to remember our nation. Let's try not to overthink this. Let's try not to be in fear all the time. Let's remember one another, be kind to one another. Um, let's remember the president and our leaders, even if we don't like him. I mean, people that don't care for him, you still need to pray for him. I mean, any other president, we don't all agree upon who we want for a president, but we should all come together in a time like this and pray for him. Uh, we need to remember all who are infected. We need to remember all those who are on the front lines, all the doctors, the nurses, the scientists that are trying to figure out a way to get rid of it. Everyone, EMT people, everyone. Um, we need to remember uh, Jackie Anderson. I believe he is doing some better, but we need to keep remembering him. Um, Vernell Whitaker and Joan Whitaker. Phil Crawford. We talked to him, or well, Jerry talked to him this morning, and he's doing much better, it sounds like. Um, let's remember our church as a whole. We need to remember one another and lift each other up. Kim. Um, we need to remember, keep remembering Beth. She's improving with her physical therapy. She's walking now. Um, but keep remembering her. Hopefully she can be walking without the cane soon. Um, Danny and Kathy Mar Mayberry. Um, let's remember Jerry's cousin Kim. She's under the weather. We need to remember her. Um, Rose's brother-in-law. He has stenosis of the spine, so let's lift him up. Uh, and let's also keep remembering our lost. Um, really, really need to pray hard for those because I believe it within my heart that times are coming to an end. This is going to be winding up soon, I believe. And we really need to pray for the lost that they will find Jesus. Um, if you have any prayer requests, just send us a message. Hopefully we'll be in the church building before too much longer. Um, if people will just pay attention to what the governor is saying and stay at home, maybe we could get this down enough to where they can figure out what to do and we can get back out and about. All right, I'm going to turn it over to Jerry now and start out with prayer before the service. Good morning. Welcome to the another service of the Valley Town Cemetery Chapel. We are broadcasting online from our home in Hayesville, North Carolina this morning. The good Lord's willing and the creeks don't rise, as the old saying goes, we'll uh, be back in the chapel next Sunday morning uh, broadcasting on the internet. Uh, if we have pretty weather we may even do a parking lot uh, s s service next Sunday morning. Everyone can sit in their cars, and we will have the PA system hooked up outside, and uh, everyone can uh, come by and enjoy and still keep a safe distance from everyone. So we hope that will uh, be something we can do next week. 
Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, as we come to you again, Lord, we're just thankful, Lord, for the opportunity we have, Lord, to go out through Facebook today, Lord, and later today on YouTube. And Father, we just pray, Lord, that you would bless, have your way in the service this morning. Father, uh, bless the message this morning, God, Lord, use it for thy glory. Father, we just pray for all these special prayer requests. Lord, you know the need of each and every heart. Lord, I pray that you'd touch Brother Scott Jacobs up in Oregon this morning, Lord, who just found out this week that he has lung cancer. We, Lord, we just pray, God, that uh, we pray a healing on him, God. Lord, we just pray, Lord, that your will would be done in his life, God. We pray for him and his wife. Linda, Lord, that you would just bless them. Father, be with Brother Robert Burt this morning, Lord. Bless him. Bless his family, Lord. Be with uh, Joy, his wife, and his daughter. Lord, I just pray, Lord, a special blessing upon them today, Lord. God bless our nation. Bless our president, Lord. Uh, give him the insight, Lord, that he needs to make the right decisions, Lord. Lord, we pray for our governor, Roy Cooper. Lord, that you would uh, touch him, touch his life, God. Father, if any of our uh, leaders, Lord, don't know you as our personal Savior, Lord, I pray conviction upon their hearts this morning, God. Father, we pray for all the ones who are infected with this horrible virus, Lord, that uh, you would touch them, heal them, Lord, in Jesus' name. Father, we pray for Rose's brother-in-law, Lord, as he has uh, spinal problems, Lord, that you would touch him. Lord, bless all of our public s s s s servants, Lord, our police, our fire, our EMS and rescue workers, Lord. God, as they put their lives on the line, Lord, to keep us safe, Lord. Father, I pray that you would touch each and every one of them, Lord. Give them a special blessing, Lord, for the the services that they render. Father, I pray, I pray a special blessing upon Brother Jackie, Lord. I just pray, Lord, that you would continue the <coughs> healing process, Lord, as he had open-heart surgery. Lord, we just pray that you'd bless him. <coughs> Father, be with Sister Vernell this morning, God. Father, I just pray that you'd touch her. And Father, be with Joan this morning, Lord, that you would bless her, Lord. I know, God, that she uh, loves you. I know that she spent a lot of time, Lord, traveling to uplift thy precious name, Lord. And we pray, pray a special prayer for her this morning, God. Lord, be with Brother Philip. We thank you, Lord, for bringing him through his battle with strep throat, Lord. We just thank you, Lord. We praise you for it for what you've done for Brother Philip. God, we pray for our church, Lord, that you would uh, uh, continue to bless our church, Lord. Father, send us musicians, Lord, to our church, Lord, that uh, Lord that would uh, be willing to work for you to uplift your holy precious name. Father, I pray, I pray for Beth, Lord, that you continue the healing process in her leg, Lord. I pray for Brother Danny and, and Kathy Mayberry, Lord, that you would touch them. Uh, 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 continue your healing process on them, Lord. And God, I pray for the lost, Lord, that you would touch each and every one, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you would sink a uh, 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 sin conviction upon this nation, Lord, that this nation would turn back to you, Lord. Father, I just pray and thank you. And we give you the honor and the praise and the glory for it's all in Jesus' sweet name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Before I get into the message, I would like to ask you that if you're uh, listening online and you'd like to send an offering to the Valley Town Church, uh, uh, chapel, you can write a check to Valleytown Cemetery Chapel and mail that to P. 
P.O. Box 994, Andrews, North Carolina, 28901. And uh, you'll be helping uplift God's kingdom if you so desire to, uh, to send an offering to the church. We, uh, I'm going to start a three-part series this morning. It, well, it probably be a six-part because what we don't get on Sunday morning, we will, we will do on Sunday nights. But uh, we're going to start uh, a message series on Easter. And, uh, you know, Easter has nothing to do with colored eggs. Easter has nothing to do with the Easter rabbit, Easter bunny. Easter is about the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He went to the cross. He died an agonizing death for our sins so that we could be made free. All we have to do is just ask forgiveness of our sins. And then he rose again on the third day and ascended into heaven to sit at the Father's right hand and he's anciently awaiting the time when God tells him, Son, go get them. Go get my children and bring them home. I'm looking forward to that day, and I pray that you are too. If you don't know the Lord as your personal Savior, I really ask that you would stick to this series of messages we're going to be having from now until Easter and I'd like to take this time to say next Sunday morning we will be at the chapel and we will be broadcasting live on Facebook if you're afraid to come out that's fine but if you'd like to come out and be with us if the weather permits we will be holding a parking lot service next Sunday morning. Uh, we'll have the PA uh, 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 set out set up outside and if the good Lord willing and uh, you can sit in your cars and keep your distance you know from other people and uh, we'll have the PA set up so everyone can hear uh, the message and the service and we just we just it's hard doing this from the house I I told uh, uh, Sister Rosa this morning I just feel more comfortable at the church delivering the message and uh, we hope that uh, all of our church members will show up next Sunday but if they don't feel uh, they don't feel s s s s safe then we ask them to stay at home because we do understand but we're going to try our best to have the these services uh, on the on Facebook for at least the next couple of weeks and hopefully we can do this every Sunday from now on having our messages and the, the services from the Valley Town Chapel online. Let's turn in the book of Mark, chapter 14. I'm going to try to read and explain verses 1 through 52. If we don't get through all of them, then we'll continue on what we don't get through this morning with tonight's uh, service so just bear with us uh, this is something new for me to do this on Facebook and I'm I, I, I'm having trouble getting my words out this morning and uh, 
you just you just pray for me that 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 God would take over and lead God and direct the way you'd have us to go this morning. And I'm going to start reading in verse one of chapter fourteen of Mark. After two days was the feast of the Passover and of unleavened bread, and the chief priests and the scribes saw how they might take him by craft and put him to death. But they said, Not on the feast day, lest there be an uproar of the people. After two days points to the start of the Jewish Passover and the feast of unleavened bread. Now this means that the, the Sanhedrin's plotted Jesus' death sometime between sunset on Tuesday and sunset on Wednesday. The Sanhedrin hesitated to act because of Jesus' popularity among the people who had flooded into town for Passover. Verse, uh, verse 3, And being in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at meat, there came a woman having an alabaster box of ointments of spikenard, very precious, and she broke the box and poured it, poured it on his head. <clears throat> an alabaster box was, was a long-necked per perfume base that was considered a luxury item. This woman poured expensive ointment of spikenard spikenard on Jesus' head. Number four says, And there were some that had indignation within themselves and said, Why was this waste of the ornament made? For it might have been sold for more than 300 pence and have been given to the poor. And they murmured against her. Now indignation means, means they were displeased at the waste of expensive perfume. The value of this was about a year's wages. And Jesus said, Let her alone, why trouble ye her? She hath wrought a good work on me. For ye have the poor with you always, and whensoever ye will, ye may do them good, but me ye have not always. She hath done what she could. She has come aforehand to anoint my body to the burying. Verily I say unto you, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached throughout the whole world, this is also that she hath done shall be spoken of for a memorial of her. Jesus rebuked the critics of this woman. What they considered wasteful was actually a good work. Her act was good because she did it for the Son of God, who is worthy of great sacrifices. Christ's followers could always minister to the poor, but they would not always have the chance to serve Jesus in person. The phrase, she hath done what she could, is almost identical to what Jesus said about the poor widow's donation. The widow gave almost nothing of monetary value. This woman gave a wealthy gift, but Jesus commented both equally. Jesus interpreted the perfume as a makeshift anointing oil for his coming burial. Jesus anticipated that this gospel would be preached in the whole world. And Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went into the chief priests to betray him unto them. And when they heard it, they were glad and promised to give him money. And he saw how he might conveniently betray him. Mark mentions Judas Iscariot here in the account of Jesus' arrest and in the listing of the twelve. The initiative for Jesus' betrayal was clearly on Judas. He wasn't recruited by the authorities. Betray or deliver is used of John the Baptist of Jesus 
and of Jesus' disciples after him. Now we're going to look at the Passover prepared. Verse 12 says, And the first day of unleavened bread, when they killed the Passover, his disciples said unto them, Where wilt thou that we go and prepare that they that thou mayest eat us the, eat the Passover? And he sendeth forth two of his disciples, and saith unto them, Go ye into the city, and there shall meet you a man bearing a pitcher of water. Water, follow him. And wheresoever he shall go, say ye to the goodman of the house, The master saith, Where is the guest chamber? Where shall I eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large upper room, furnished and prepared. There make ready for us. Luke 22 and 8 identifies the, the disciples as Peter and John. Go ye into the city, indicates they were outside Jerusalem, probably at Bethany. A man bearing a pitcher was unusual. Normally, women carried water in earthenware jugs, whereas men used animal skins. Meat could mean either encounter or that the man was looking for him. He apparently knew Jesus since the disciples identified Jesus cryptically as the master. The guest chamber in verse 15 was a large upper room, probably the spacious roof chamber of a wealthy man. The room was prepared to accommodate a large group. Number 16 says, And his disciples went forth and came into the city, and found that he hath said unto them, And they made ready the Passover. And in the evening he cometh with the twelve. And as they said and did eat, Jesus said, Verily I say unto you, One of you which eateth with me shall betray me. And they began to be sorrowful, and to say unto him by, one by one, is it I? And another said, Is it I? And he answered and said unto them, It is one of the twelve that dippeth me in the dish, dippeth with me in the dish. And the Son of Man indeed goeth as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. Good were it for that man if he had never been born. Jesus had said earlier that he would be betrayed. Now he added that the betrayer would be one of his disciples. The words, one of you which eateth with me, did not immediately identify the betrayer since all of the disciples were dining together. No one attempted to refute Jesus or make accusations. Apparently Judas was above suspicion at this point. The, the, the disciples question is I expected both a negative response and a word of reassurance from Jesus. The, that the betrayer was dipping bread with Jesus meant he was seated nearby. On Son of Man, Jesus had stated his betrayal was predicted by Scripture 9 and verse 12. This verse unites God's prophesied plan as it is written with human actions and responsibility. Now let's look at, look at the Lord's Supper. And as they did eat, Jesus took bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And when he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank of it. And he said unto them, This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many. Verily I say unto you, I will drink no more of the fruit of the vine until that day that I drink it new in the kingdom of God. And then 
And when they had sung a hymn, they went out into the Mount of Olives. Mark did not spec specify at what point in the, the traditional course of the Passover meal, Jesus instituted the Last Supper. This is my body is metaphorical. This is my blood is metaphorical. The New Testament or New Covenant of Jesus' blood recalls the institution of the Mosaic Covenant at Sinai when the Israelites were sprinkled with blood. Shed for many recalls Jesus' word in chapter 10, verse 45, and on Isaiah's words in Isaiah 53, 11 through 12, about the Messiah dying on the behalf of others. Jesus' words, verily I say unto you, focused on the group's attention. Even though Jesus had explained his death and its meaning, it would not be the end for him. The day would come when he would drink with them in the kingdom of God. The Passover meal traditionally ended with singing the Hallel Psalms. Let's look at verse 27. And Jesus saith unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night. For it is written, I shall smite the shepherd, and the sheep shall be scattered. But after that I am risen, I will go before ye into Galilee. But Peter said unto him, Although all, be, although all shall be offended, Yet will not I. And Jesus saith unto him, Verily I say unto thee, That even this day, Even in this night, Before the cock crow twice, Thou shalt deny me thrice. But he spake the more vehemently, If I should die with thee, I shall not deny thee in any likewise in any wise likewise also said they all quick tongue Peter declared his steadfastness but Jesus infallibly foreknew that Peter would cower in the face of opposition Gethsemane means olive press located across the Kidron Valley on the western slope of the Mount of Olives it was Jesus' regular meeting place with his disciples. Verse 32 says, And they came into a place which was called Gethsemane, and he saith unto his disciples, Sit here while I shall pray. And he taketh with him Peter, James, and John, and, to be, and began to be sore amazed and to be very heavy. And saith unto them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful unto death. Tarry ye here and watch. And he went forward a little and fell on the ground and prayed that, if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible unto thee. Take away this cup from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what thou wilt. And he cometh and findeth them sleeping, and saith unto Peter, Simon, sleepest thou? Couldest thou not watch one hour? <coughs> Peter, James, and John were the inner circle of Jesus' disciples. Each pledged his willingness to die with Jesus. Mark used two rare Greek words to describe Jesus' emotions. Sore amazed occurs only in Mark 33 uh, and has the nuisance, nuance of greatly alarm. The word for very heavy expresses extreme anxiety and it occurs elsewhere in Matthew and Philippians. The phrase unto death indicates the depth of Jesus' distress. 
fell on the ground pictures Jesus collapsing under his burden. The hour refers to Jesus the finally appointed death. If it were possible was a request for God to change his divine plan. Abba is Arabic for father. Jesus words all things are possible unto thee affirm God's power and recalled his teaching. This cup refers to personal suffering and death, but also to God's judgment on sin. Not what I will, but what thou wilt, recalls Jesus' model prayer. Not his personal desire, but the Father's will defined Jesus' life. Verse 38 says, Watch ye and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. The spirit is truly ready, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, and spake the same words. And when he returned, he found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. Neither wist they what to answer them. And he cometh the third time and saith unto them, Sleep on now and take your rest. It is enough. The hour is come. Behold, the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise up. Let us go. Lo, he that betrayeth me is at hand. Peter was signaled out for his failure to stay awake because of his bold claims earlier in the evening. Jesus of Jesus' acknowledgment that the flesh is weak may have him applied to himself also that night, given his suffering. Natural human weaknesses, hunger, fatigue, and it, 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 etc. can pose great spiritual danger. The stupefied disciples did not know what to say to him. This recalls Peter's experience on the Mount of Transfiguration and the disciples uh, of, of silence in 9 and 34. Sleep on now was either a statement of reproach or a question. Are you still sleeping? Enough was a cry of e e exasperation and served to waken the sleepers. Jesus had prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. But God did not grant that request, and the hour had come. Rise up. Let us go. Was a call to meet the mob head on, not an encouragement to flee. And immediately, verse 43, And immediately, while he yet spake, cometh Judas, one of the twelve, and with him a great multitude with swords and staves, from the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. And he betrayed him, and he that betrayed him had given him a token, saying, Whosoever I shall kiss, that same is he. Take him and lead him away safely. And as soon as he come, he goeth straightway to him and saith, Master, Master, and kissed him. And they laid their hands on him and took him. And one of them that stood by drew a sword and smote a servant of the high priest and cut off his ear. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Are ye come out as against a thief with swords and with staves to take me? I was daily with you in the temple teaching, and ye took me not. But the scriptures must be fulfilled. And they all forsook him and fled. And there followed him a certain young man, having a linen cloth cast about his naked body. And the young man laid hold on him. And he left the linen cloth and fled from them naked. Token refers to a sign agreed on in advance. 
The Pacific signal was a kiss, probably on the cheek. While a kiss was a common greeting, this was the only time a disciple is recorded as greeting Jesus this way. Master means my great one. It was an address of honor to one's teacher. The attack on the high priest servant is recorded in all four Gospels. John identifies the attacker as Peter and the slave as Malchus. Apparently, Jesus' disciples asked if they should defend him with swords, but Peter didn't wait for a reply on Jesus' de disciples carrying swords. See Luke chapter 22, verses 35 through 38. Jesus restored Malchus' ear. The scriptures that must be fulfilled are not identified, but verse 50 points to Zechariah chapter 13 and verse 7 as one of them. They all refers to the disciples. The young man is, is unidentified, but may have suggested that he was John Mark, the author of this gospel. Father in heaven, Lord, as we come to you today, Lord, we ask, Lord, that everyone that's under the presence of my voice today, Lord, would take these scriptures, Lord, and apply them to their heart and life, God. Father, I just pray, Lord, that if there's any listening, Lord, that's backslid upon you, Lord, that's grown cold and indifferent, Father, I pray, Lord, that you'd speak to that heart at this moment, Lord. God, send conviction upon them, Lord. God, that they would repent of their sins and their shortcomings, God. Father, if there's one listening, Lord, that's lost, Lord, that's undone without you, Lord. Father, I pray that you'd speak to that heart, Lord. Send conviction upon them, Lord. Father, if they would repent, and ask you to come into their life, Lord, as our personal Savior. Father, I, once again, I thank you for this opportunity, Lord, that we have to go out into the airwaves by Internet. Father, I pray for this, uh, this pandemic we're going through at the moment, Lord. I just pray, Lord, that thy will would be done, Father. Lord, I pray, Lord, it is not long, Lord, till we can be back in our churches, Lord, singing your praises, Lord, lifting our hands and praising and worshiping you, Lord. Father, I just pray, Lord, that you would lead, guide, and direct all of our pastors, Lord, of each and every church in, in this community and all of the, all of the United States, Lord. Godly God direct them that they would go in the ways, Lord, that you would have them to, Lord, and they would never fail to uplift the holy, precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, we just pray for each and every one that's listened today, Lord, that they would get a blessing out of this message, Lord. Father, I just pray, Lord, that your will would be done on earth as it is in heaven. Father, we thank you. We praise you. We give you all the praise and glory. For it's in Jesus' sweet name we only ask. Amen. Amen. We'll continue this tonight. Uh, we'll start at verse 53 tonight. Condemnation by the high priest. And we want you, if you're without a church and you live in the Murphy, Andrews, or Hazel areas, we'd like to invite you to come out to Valley Town Cemetery Chapel. We're located on uh, Valley Town Cemetery Road. That's just off U.S. Business. You, you go up 
if you're coming from Murphy or Hazel, go through Andrews and uh, go up to the June Luska Road that turns off to the right. And then uh, instead of turning up June Luska, just take a right or a left rather on the Valley Town Cemetery Road and uh, go around the first curve as you go up the hill and the chapel sitting there on your right. It's a white building with a red roof and red shutters. We'd love to have you. And uh, until tonight, may God bless each and every one of you.